Then when we started thinking about the Avery Normal Institute, it was a school that was founded in 1865 that stayed open until about 1954. The Avery Normal Institute uh, got its name from Reverend Charles Avery. He passed and his estate was giving $10,000 to um, what would then have been Clark College in Atlanta, Georgia. And when the principals of the African American school here in Charleston, they um, convinced the uh, Avery estate to give money towards the school in Charleston as well. His estate was being ran by the American Missionary Association. So that's how we uh, changed the name of the Saxon Institute and the Tavern Institute over to the Avery and Normal Institute. That was a school founded for the teaching of formerly enslaved African Americans. The Normal Institute was a teacher training school. Um, that's where the normal part of the, uh, the name comes from. So when we're talking about the Avery Normal Institute, we, um, here we had a classical education. Um, and also when we start thinking about the different type of black education during the 19th century, you know, many people try to uh, narrow it down to an industrial education versus a classical education. So that would be like, uh, the Du Bois model versus the, um, the Booker T. Washington model, you know. So when we start thinking about the Avery, we were a classical training school. Uh, we uh, learned the, and the classics, be it Greek, uh, Latin, um, you know, the arithmetics. You will have your teacher training so you can get your teacher certificate to go out to teach. Um, now, although we were a classical training school, we did still have those um, industrial models as well. So you could still learn cobbling here. You could still learn um, brick making here. You could still learn uh, woodwork here. Um, there, so we did have that, have that crossover. And, um, but our primary focus was on that classical education, what some would call that the boys and model. Avery was a private school um, all the way up until about the 1930s and 40s. After the funding from the American Missionary Association ended um, during that time period, um, we turned into a public school. The city of Charleston felt that there was no need for two black public schools on the peninsula of Charleston. So our students in 1954 um, were transferred over to Burke High School at that time. Um, now if you ask any Averyite who was still alive and who went to this school, they condemned this building and said it was uninhabitable. However, not too long after, Trident Technical College, which was then Palmer Secretarial College, did not put a nail in the wall before they moved into this building. And so then for between the 1950s going up to the 1970s, Tri um, Palmer Secretarial College, which is, then, which is now Trident Technical College, was inside of this building. And once they moved out, that's when we got into it with the city again about um, trying to take this building back over for the purposes of African Americans in the low country. The Avery Research Center was founded by former Avery Ice, but it was spearheaded by the Honorable Lucille Whipper, who was a legislator at the time. Um, and like I said, she was an Avery Ice class in 1944. In the 1970s, when the city was getting ready to um, sell the building again, um, and was thinking about turning this um, building into condos, former Avery Ice and uh, other Goodwill people came and said that um, they wanted to save this building because it needed to be kept within the black community of Charleston. So they created the Avery Institute of Afro-American History and Culture. When they got together, they partnered with the College of Charleston and the legislature to start the Avery Research Center. We are a hub here in Charleston. And we uh, serve a unique function within this space. Uh, we have to serve the college because we are part of the College of Charleston. We are under the library system. So we serve the academic community in that space, but then we also have a responsibility to the community as well. And so we are that unique place to where we can link the academic and the, uh, the academy and the community together and be that hub. Um, one thing that we uh, continue to do is try to last on that, uh, build off of the legacy of the Avery Normal Institute. We are a place for education. We are a library and an archive. We collect the history and preserve the history so we can share it out to the world, through the, uh, to the masses, through our primary sources, through uh, our entire library, through our public education and community programming. Um, those are the type of things that we do here. Um, so if you actually go into our auditorium, we have four original pillars to the building and we try to use that as analogous to the mission of the Avery. So first, our archive, our backbone. Um, like I said, where we, uh, where we take our primary sources and share that with everyone. Our museum, you can come through here and you can see, and, uh, with, uh, be it school groups, community groups, you can come through and see the history of African Americans throughout the low country and diaspora. 
our community education. We put out pamphlets. Um, we do reports uh, such as our uh, Charleston County Racial Disparities Report um, that looked at five different disparities inside of Charleston County or our Black, um, South Carolina Black History Bugles that we go into every um, elementary school inside of the state of South Carolina. Um, we pull things from our, um, our archives and show students that you can, that this information is for you. So we do that as part of our community education. We push all of that out through our public programming. Now uh, we have, we host different lectures, movie, uh, movie showings. We, um, we, we host probably about four or five different events a month. Uh, and, and that all goes to our Avery Digital um, um, Classroom as well, which is, can be seen, um, that, which can be seen on our YouTube page as well. So um, we serve a lot of different functions, and then people also see us as um, a place to keep them safe. We are a safe place for our students and for our community. Um, be it um, the students at the College of Charleston, if they feel as if um, the college is not being that safe space for them, they can come down here, and we'll be that for them. The community, they know that we won't send anybody who's trying to um, who's trying to take advantage of them out into the community. They know that if we, if our name is attached to it, then it's something that um, they can trust. So we 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 serve a lot of hats with a staff of seven people, but um, uh, we have a responsibility and we're here to keep it.